Are your prints not coming out as good as they could be? We're going to look at the Ebos Cyclops filament dryer and see if this can improve your print quality. Next on the corner. Hey everybody, welcome back to the corner. It's me, Jeff. Glad to have you all here. This time around, Ebos reached out to me and gave me the opportunity to look at their Cyclops filament dryer. Now Ebos run a Kickstarter on this a little while ago and they're in production and I have the opportunity here to look at this product and see if it's going to help with prints. Now filament is hydroscopic so that means that it absorbs moisture and if you live in a high humidity area like I do on the Pacific West Coast, my humidity generally ranges anywhere from 45% up to 70 or 80%. So my filament absorbs a lot of moisture. Now, one way to combat this, and I've done videos in the past before, is you need to dry your filament. I had a, I've had a, a few filament dryers in the past. I've done some makeshift filament dryers, but let's have a look at this Ebo system. When you first turn on the Cyclops, you're greeted with the digital display. I like the fact that Celsius is in red and there's the blue timer. You can adjust by simply hitting the appropriate either temperature or time button and it flashes you can go up or down with the arrows on the side with the hours you can go down to the minutes as well it seems to be very responsive so as I first turn it on here you can see I'm at 42 percent humidity so I'm basically I'm just gonna move it aside plugged in and put a piece of cardboard behind it that's usually what I do so as you can see here, it's been on for about 8 minutes. It's already dropped down to 29. That's quite promising. As we go further, as you can see, in just under half an hour, 25 minutes, we've gotten down to 10% humidity, 10 to 12. I'm impressed so far, but now I have to run some prints. So I decided to do these tests with PETG, and I was going to use my Kingroon KP3S for these. I flash back to original firmware and I'm using the standard Cura profile. I was trying to simulate what would happen for a new user buying PETG and using a stock printer with a stock profile. I chose some models that I thought would illustrate stringing or moisture issues. Once I was done printing the test models, I put both rolls of filament into the dryer, let them dry overnight, and then I was going to reprint the same G-code with the dried filament. So let's have another look at the Ebo Cyclops before we get to our results. It has a nice bright display, has a humidity sensor, it has nine filament paths on top, it has four filament paths, two at the back and two at the front. So you have lots of options to keep the machine running while you're printing. Or you can print to two separate machines with the two separate rolls. Under the hood, as you can see here as I turn it off, it's got the bearing rollers. It's got a little silicone gasket on them that you can adjust just for the width of your filament roll to keep that secure. I'll show you that right now. I'll put a filament roll on there and then you just simply move the spacer towards it and it helps keep the filament roll snug. The filament bearings do the job. It rolls fairly smoothly. Now let's look at the inside. As you can see you have a fan duct here. It does blow the hot air um, it doesn't redirect it though, you see from the bottom here. So the only problem that I see is that you might, if you're not printing while 
drying the filament, you could just dry the bottom, so you might need to pull it out and just rotate the filament every once in a while in it. You're going to want to check that your voltage is proper, and it's just marked on the back here, as you can see, for your proper country. Overall, it's a nice machine. It is made of plastic, but it feels okay. It feels well made. Now let's have a look at our printing results here. So as you can see here, I printed this cat. Now you can see there's a, quite a bit of stringing on the inside. This is after drying. As you can see, it's a much better result. There's still a little bit of stringing for Pet G, but that's really good overall, considering it's an untuned profile. I did the same thing with the orange filament. As you can see here, again, the before, quite a bit of stringing. And this has been sitting on my shelf probably about six months or so. And now the after, you can see it's much cleaner. Again, still a bit of stringing, but untuned profile. Let's have a look at And here's another example that I did that you can kind of see. I did this scraper here. You see quite a bit of stringing in between the hexagons. And now after drying, a great improvement. So yeah, I really like this machine. I think it does a good job. It's got a decent manual. It gives you the recommended settings. Um, always with recommended settings, I find, I usually just leave the filament dryer on overnight, to be honest with you. So that's the only one concern that I have is if you're not printing with it and the spools aren't spinning, you might just have uneven drying on this. I'd like to see either a 3D printed cover for where the vent is, just to redirect the air as opposed to blowing it directly on the filament. But again, what you could simply do is thread the end of your filament through one of the many holes on the Cyclops and simply every once in a while just pull it a little bit to rotate the spool. That's probably the simplest solution to this. Or chances are you'll have it hooked up to a printer printing and you won't have to worry about it. So where do you get the iBoss 3D filament dryer? Well, it is available on their website. I know it's available from third-party distributors such as Amazon. It lists for $115.99 and I, and I think they put this filament dryer in a good price range. It's a dual filament dryer as opposed to a single one. It has some nice features with the circulating fan and the humidity sensor, the really good control panel to adjust uh, temperature and timing. I like the look of it. I think this will definitely complement and improve your 3D printing. And I think the results speak for themselves. If you like what I'm doing here, give me a thumbs up. If you're cruising through the channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you have any comments or questions about the iBoss filament dryer, leave them down below. We'll see if we can get them answered for you. And until next time, guys, keep on printing.